Right, this is what is the area in square inches of this quadrilateral. So now, they gave you um, that this is 10, this is 8, and you don't know this. Uh, so we know that here's 10 again, here's 8, and we can find this. And they gave us that this is a right angle. So all these are right angles in here. All right, now, this breaks down into uh, four different triangles, uh, right triangles. So we can use our um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared Pythagorean theorem. Uh, remember your c or your a and b are your legs and your c is the hypotenuse which is across from the right angle. So here's my x which is my hypotenuse which is the c. So I'm going to call this 10 squared. I'm going to call this 8 squared. And we don't know the c. So it's going to be 100 plus 64 equals c squared. 100 whoops. 100 plus 64 is 164. And the opposite of a square is a square root. So this is the square root of 164. Uh, so we can take a look at that. So 164 square root is about 12.8. Remember the little squiggly equal sign means about. So each one of these sides is 12.8. So now this says what is the area in square uh, inches of the quadrilateral. Um, so let's just make sure that yep, every side is going to be 12.8. So this is 12.8. That's 12.8, 12.8. So uh, that means it's a square um, or a rhombus because uh, they're all the same thing. Uh, so that's just going to be 12.8 times 12.8. That's going to equal 163.84. So this one was my closest. So your answer was G on that one. All right, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly, and this is just definition, uh, it has exactly uh, one pair uh, of parallel sides. All right, this diagram shows a rectangular prism. What is the total surface area of this prism? So you should remember that surface area equals two times length width plus two times length height, plus two times height width. Now it doesn't matter what you call length, what you call width, what you call height, as long as you stay consistent. So I'm gonna call my length four. I'm gonna call my width three. So again, I called my length four. So I'm gonna call my height 14, since that's all that's left. So my height was 14, and my width was three. All right, so now all you gotta do is multiply this together. Two times four is eight, eight times three is 24. Um, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 12 is 112, plus 2 times 14 is 28, 28 times 3 84. Alright, now we just add them all together. So 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, so we're carrying the 1, so that's going to be a 3, 4, uh, 12 carry the 1, so 220 square units, or square inches. So our surface area is measured in squared units. All right, which polygon has two times as many angles as a pentagon? So we said before, uh, all polygons have the same amount of sides as they do angles. So a pentagon has five angles. So therefore, I'm looking for something with 10 angles. A decagon has 10, a nonagon has nine, hex has six, and hept has seven. So that is a decagon. All right, which line segment most likely connects points located at negative 4, 3, and 4, 3? So negative 4 is going to make me go, because we always start at our origin, 4 to the left and 3 down. So I want this one. And then 4, 3, whoops, I'm sorry. It said negative 4, positive 3. So I went negative 4 to the left and then positive 3 up. And then 4 to the right and 3 up. So I'm looking for segment PO. All right, the school soccer team is ordering new pads for their uniforms. The knee pads come in four different colors, six sizes, and two styles. How many different outcomes of knee pads are available? So this is just the counting principle. Uh, so for colors, we have four. For sizes, we have six. And styles, we have two. So remember, with uh, the counting principle, all you have to do is multiply uh, the number of 
possibilities in each uh, situation. Uh, so 4 times 6 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. So we have 48 different possible uh, situations uh, we can do with all those. All right, this says which scatter plot best displays a positive relationship among the data points? Remember, scatter plots, we always read them from left to right and just draw an arrow uh, through the line of best fit. So this is going to be a negative correlation. Uh, this one doesn't have any pattern, so this is a no correlation. This one's going up, so that's positive. And this one's just going left to right, so that just stays the same. So the one with a positive is H. All right, the number of sandwiches sold at four stores from week one through week five is shown in the table. Based only on the data in the table, which store is most likely to increase its sales of sandwiches in week six? Uh, so this is just a pattern sequence. So we went up, uh, we went one down, up, up. This one's going down every time. This one's slowly going down. You had one little one right here, uh, but it went there. This one you have no idea. So store P is the only one where you're consistently going uh, up each time. All right, interquartile range, the box and whisker. So remember, interquartile range just equals the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So my upper quartile is right here. I'm sorry, lower quartile is right here. And your upper quartile is right here. So your upper is 60. We're going to subtract from 30. So my interquartile range is 30. All right, what is the median of the data? All right, so remember we have mean, which is the average. We have the mode, which is the most. We have the median, which is the middle. And we have the range, which is just the big minus the small. So they're asking us for the median. So remember, with median, you have to order these from least to greatest and then find out what's in the middle. So my first smallest one is 30, and I like to cross them out so I don't use them again. And then I have a 33, and then I have a 38. Oh, I actually have a 35 that I missed. So a 35, then a 38. So those are gone. And then I'm gonna have a 41, a 43, another 43, a 50, and then finally a 64. Alright, so remember with median, all you got to do is you cross out from each side until you find the thing in the middle. So if I get rid of this one, I got to slash this one, slash this one, slash the 50, 35, 43, 38, and 43. So I got 41. <clears throat> All right, the students in Mr. Denton's class earn the following scores on a fitness test. Which frequency table best displays these, uh, these data? Uh, so, since all of these have the same uh, frequency uh, score ranges, uh, we could make our own frequency table, but the easiest thing to do first is we're gonna count how many things we have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pieces of data. And then we'll see if these match up. So this has two, so that's seven. Uh, seven plus four is 11. 11 plus four is 14, so that is 14. Two plus four is six. Six plus five is 11. 11 plus three is 14, so that one's good. Uh, two plus three is five. Five plus five is 10. Uh, 10 plus three is 13, so that one can't be right because it doesn't even have enough pieces. We got two plus, two plus four is six. 6 plus 5 is 11, 11 plus 2 is 13, so that can't be right either. So we know it's got to be either one of these. Uh, so the only difference in these are, it goes 2, 5, 4, 3, 2, 4, 5, 3. So there's something in here between the 400s and 900s. Uh, so the easiest thing to do, would just figure out how many come between 400 and 499. So this one does, this one, this one, this one, and that's it. So whichever one has four. So since this one says it has five, can't be that one. So it's got to be G. Uh, so uh, we can check. 
Uh, just to make sure. So 300 to 399. Here we'll use a we'll use a box for that one. Uh, we got one here, and oh, right next to it, right there. All right. We can use an underline for the 500 to 599. So one, two, three, four, five, and then finally uh, the last one. We got. We'll use like a triangle kind of thing here. So that's good. So G was our correct answer. All right. Uh, a bag has 15 white marbles, 12 blue uh, marbles. Allison will randomly select one marble from the bag. What is the probability that she will select a blue marble? Um, so we have 15 white, 12 blue. So that means I have 27 total. Um, and we want to know what's the probability she's going to get a blue one. So there's 12 blue. So remember, probability, and this is theoretical, since she's actually not doing it, this is just in theory, because we didn't actually have an experiment. So it's just how many ways it can happen over the total number in the bag. So this is 12 over 27. Uh, they don't have a 12 over 27, so we're going to assume that they're wanting us to reduce. So 3 can go into both of these. So this is going to be a 4. This is going to be a 9. Uh, so 4 ninths is simplified all the way. 